everyone and welcome to the second video for the first week of class where we're going to be talking about knowledge or how we know what we know. So um, I know that sounds a little funny and you may be like, what? Or if you watched the previous video, um, you may have seen my reference to the Friends episode where there was a lot of no, no, no's in, in terms of knowledge no's, not negative nose. But in any case, um, what we're talking about here is understanding what knowledge is. So what does it mean to know something? Is knowing something the same as understanding it? For example, if I'm looking at a parent and child relationship in terms of attachment, if I know what attachment is, is that the same as understanding what attachment is? And this leads to the second question of what can we know? What can we know about attachment? So to get at answering this question, we have to look at different research paradigms. So a paradigm is a set of beliefs or a way of thinking about the world that guides research. So essentially, how we see the world and what we think we can know about it is based on, and this is a big word alert, okay, I have two big words coming up, based on ontological and epistemological assumptions. I wasn't kidding with the big words, right? But breaking it down, they're not just words. They, the key here is this definition set of beliefs and a way of thinking about the world that guides research. Okay, so let's break them down. Ontology. This involves our beliefs about the nature of reality. Okay, I know, just wait for it. So what is real? What is true? What is existence or what can exist? Also, is reality objective? And taking it one step further, is there only one reality? So I know you're probably thinking of science fiction shows at this point, um, like Next Generation and Doctor Who, two of my favorites, and my most recent favorite, The Flash, where they really go into you know this idea of different realities. But it's not just science fiction. It actually applies to our real world haha <laughs> pun intended <laughs> um, so ontology is the answer to these questions and different types of research are based on what the researcher believes reality or truth is so what researchers think reality or truth is shapes what they can know about it for example Let's go back to attachment. If one believes that attachment is objective, then it can be measured. It can be quantified. It can be known. Okay. On the other hand, if one believes that attachment is subjective, then it is difficult to measure, it cannot be quantified, and it cannot be fully known. So there are different meanings for different people. So how is this connected to epistemology? Well, epistemology is the study of knowledge. This is the question of how do we know what we know? How can we go about knowing what we know? In other words, what are the necessary and sufficient conditions of knowledge? And here we mean necessary as in required. What are the required conditions of knowledge? And by sufficient, we mean enough. Like what, what is the enough level <laughs> in terms of um, uh, knowledge? So, we're asking the question of how is it produced? How is knowledge produced? What are the sources of knowledge? What is the structure of knowledge? What are its limits? 
So then this leads to sort of the main point here, which is that a person's ontological beliefs dictate their epistemological beliefs and then how they're going to go about um, gathering knowledge. Putting it in another way, <laughs> um, what a researcher believes about the nature of reality, which again, that's an ontology, the nature of reality, what a researcher believes about that dictates what they think the relationship should be between themselves and what they want to study. So their approach to discovering knowledge, in other words, the methods that they're going to use, right? all the methods that we're going to learn in this class, their approach to discovering knowledge is based on those beliefs. So when you think of ontology and epistemology, I want you to think of, think of them as going hand in hand, and hopefully this picture will help for those of you who need visual uh, images like I do. Okay, um, so approaches to research. If a researcher believes that reality or truth can be known and measured, remember that object, you know, that they think they think that reality is objective, then this person believes that a researcher should be removed from what it is he or she is studying in order to remain objective. So this is called taking an etic perspective or approach, which is another way of saying is taking an outside view. For example, let's say we wanted to know more about this fish in a fishbowl. Okay, so imagine the fish represents a whole bunch of people and the fishbowl is their community. Well, uh, someone who believes that reality and truth can be known and measured, that reality is objective, they're going to study it from the outside. Versus if a researcher believes that reality and truth is subjective, with many different meanings, then she or he believes that a researcher should interact with whatever or whoever she or he is studying in order to find out what the truth is to the people that are being studied. So this is called an emic perspective or approach which is taking an inside view as opposed to the outside view for the etic approach. So I know that can be confusing. Emic is inside, etic is outside. Okay, so what does this look like? So here's that fishbowl, right? Representing the community and the people. Then a researcher taking an emic perspective would go inside and try to learn um, everything about the community from the community's perspective. I try to figure out a way to make that um, easier to remember. And if I do it in time for this video, it'll be right here. And lo and behold, I did figure it out. So here is my attempt to explain etic versus emic in a way that can be the, where the words can be remembered. Okay, so etic has the letter T in it, as does the word outside. So when we take an etic or outside perspective, we're being separate from what it is we're trying to understand. So we're on the outside looking in. Versus an emic approach, which kind of sounds like or similar to embark in the sense that they both have uh, em as the beginning of their words so with an emic perspective we're embarking upon this journey into the unknown but we're doing so by going inside and becoming a part of what it is that we are studying so etic um, think of outside emic think about embarking on a journey and became, becoming part of what we're trying to understand okay so let's get back to our regularly scheduled program so then in terms of connection or the connection to research methods a researcher's ontological and epistemological beliefs dictate what research methods that she or he will use so for example a researcher taking an etic approach 
because they believe reality is objective and that it can be known, then they're probably going to do an internet internet, ugh, <laughs> internet survey of hundreds of people or paper and pencil surveys or, or what have you. The, the key here is that they're, they're going to try to quantify whatever uh, is being studied. And by quantify, I mean add you know, numbers to it. Versus if a researcher is taking an emic approach because they believe that reality is subjective and that um, there are many different meanings that can be known or in some cases not known, then they're going to do uh, more in-depth interviews with only a few people or with many people, but just really trying to um, understand what is happening uh, while being immersed in whatever is happening. So we're almost done, but just this is sort of a, a, a blow your mind moment. <laughs> so, okay, just to kind of take this one step further, if I, as a woman, want to understand male gang affiliation and I decide to do in-depth interviews using an emic approach, meaning going inside, I am still an outsider because I am not male and I am not affiliated with a gang. So I am, as a person and what I come with, an outsider, but I'm going inside. I know, I told you, it's like, woo! <laughs> but we'll go over it more, we'll go over it more in class and, uh, and uh, answer any questions that you may have, or you can ask questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching and these are the sources of the images used and I will see you either in class or on here. Okay, bye.